I'm joined also by Peter McQuire from XM Australia. Peter, hi, good to have you. I want to start with crude first. And, uh, you know, obviously, when you look at coal or sugar, ethanol, we have seen a lot of commodities actually react to what crude has been doing. So after hitting a high of 139, trading at around 109 right now, there is quite a bit of profit taking that we've seen come in for the market. Clearly, we also have seen margins being hiked for many of these commodities. Uh, there is some development on ground as well. There is sourcing of crude happening from Venezuela and various other countries too. So yes, there are some reports which are not totally bullish out there. Uh, what is your sense on where we are trading right now and what, are, what, what would you want to watch out for? Well, Manisha, uh, I think last week was just took everyone by surprise. Who could have imagined that volatility? And here we are back at the starting position of what we started Monday morning. So... There are just, again, there's been traders long, short and everything in between over those three or four days. It was just extraordinary. And probably I wouldn't be surprised some of that hot air comes out of it uh, in the sense of a little bit of consolidation, you know, 105, 110, until we hear something dramatic happening from the Russia-Ukraine situation and whether there's a deal to be done with the Iran nuclear deal. So there's a lot of large... Uh, I suppose, geopolitical and global themes that need to be absorbed into the market over the next matter of days. Uh, you know, the, the last week was a, was a week when we saw profit taking coming in, but we've seen that decline getting extended as we've started this week as well. So, yes, there are some conversations. The threat, uh, the fear, the fear of war or even more sanctions, all of that is not out yet. Uh, wh how would you look at traders going in for this profit taking? How lower could this go? There are people also saying that there are buying opportunities now coming in for many of them. How are you reading it? Well, I think there probably are buying opportunities and it's hard to find where that floor is, but maybe it's got to be 100, 101. Let's see what happens over the next 12 to 18 hours. The sell-off we saw in, in Asian equities was dramatic today on some of those markets. So I think that there's a general general theme as far as nervousness from equity markets, and that could drag crude a little bit lower also. That hot air seems to have dissipated a little bit from the Russia situation, Manisha. So I wouldn't be surprised for it to give up a few more bucks. You've got NYMEX at around about 106. So, yeah, maybe over that neck, when by the time New York opens tonight, I'll be interested to see what its opening is and whether we see a rally to the upside or just a more consolidation. You know, Peter, we were talking to Nomura a while back and uh, they, they said that their house view is that the worst case scenario is 125, best case is still at 100, even, uh, you know, below those $100 barrel kind of levels there. How I, I mean, are you willing to put a range out on crude now for this month, next month? Well, this month, next month, I mean, if you, if you tie the deal together with Iran and the Russia situation seems to dissipate and a lot of that hot air comes out of it, through the circumstances that there's a that it just seems to uh, turn back to some, some form of normality, then that war premium and geopolitical premium will be stripped out of the market quickly, Manisha. So you know that's the issue. You could be sitting at a ninety dollar crude up to you know one hundred and twenty because no one can tell what's going to happen in the future, and you know we're still waiting to see what the actual theme is from Iran and whether Mr. Putin's going to be far more disruptive as far as crude supplies globally. Mm. So, Peter, final question. We've seen $30 come off in case of crude, and uh, uh, we've also seen um, metal prices come off anywhere between 5 to 12% from the kind of highs that we've traded yeah. there. Would you, how much of a war premium would you say is off the prices? If there was a position to hold long right now, what commodity, what metal would you look at? Well, I'm going to keep a closer eye on silver and gold, Manisha, because I think that the overall appetite is strong because of the current inflation numbers coming out globally. So you've got 19, 1980 for COMEX gold. Uh, you know, I, I think there's going to be stronger for longer. The Indian market, strong retail buyers, and naturally that's going across the globe. So in times of fear, people are buying that. So I think that the gold market, I'm also looking as far as some of those base metals. They've, some of them have given up big licks and uh, let's not forget what happened to nickel last week. It was just extraordinary. So that just demonstrates the volatility that presents itself to base metals, precious metals, and of course, energy and foods. Oh, yes. And nickel trading has been shut from 8th of March and hasn't uh, come back into the markets yet. So that clearly is a blackout yes. as far as nickel goes. But we'll talk.